Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my book review for my Killer Reads A Thrill A Month book club pick for August, which was Dean Kuntz's Strangers. If you're unfamiliar with my Thrill A Month book club, I will leave a link to the Discord down below where you can uh, join in with all of our reads, which I will list in the description box down below so you can see all of the books that are on the list. This is the list of Penguin's top thrillers of all time. I don't know who created the list, but that's the list we're going by. We're reading one of these uh, thrillers every month. Um, some of them are definitely thrillers, some are obviously not thrillers, but they have thrilling aspects. Somehow they made the list. Um, some of them are really, really good. Some of them have not been so great. Uh, some of them are just okay, but this one was really good. Um, I'm giving it four enthusiastic stars. So, <clears throat> Strangers. Um, it looks like it's a book about aliens, does it not? I mean, that's what I thought when I was going into it. So that's the what the sort of like what was in my mind the whole time I was reading it. So it's about it's a huge book, actually. It took me several days to read. Um, it's about a group of people who are sort of scattered across the United States who are having these very interesting, like fear based dreams or phenomena that have to do with forgetting things or being afraid of things, all of these people have some sort of issue that they're dealing with. Most of it is fear-based, and they don't understand why, and it's really disrupting their lives. Um, for example, one of the characters is a priest, and he starts to question his faith um, as a result of some a thing that he can't put his finger on. He just is losing his faith, and he's distraught over it. Then there's another character who starts seeing objects in her real life, in her real everyday world, and they cause so much terror in her that she starts, she like blacks out and is like runs and she's blindly running in this blackout state and she comes to like hiding and shivering. So there's several characters that are having very different phenomena. Eventually, all of these characters come together um, through various means when they discover that a couple of them perhaps have broken through the memory loss and are starting to recover memories about what happened to them. And all of these characters are drawn to this place in New Mexico where the it seems that the event occurred to begin with that brought them to this state of forgetting. And now, and then there's an outside force that, um, has imposed its sort of will on them, which has created their memory loss uh, for a specific purpose, to keep them from saying anything about what they saw in that location. Um, and then they all, so they all come together over this, and they, the closer they get to the actual event, and as they each rehash what they actually do remember, all of their memories start to open up, and they then they recall what exactly has happened. Um, but again, the outside force doesn't want them to remember, so they have to not only battle to remember, but battle to uh, expose what it was that they saw to the world. And there's this sort of back and forth about whether or not it's a good idea whether the human race is ready to know what it is that these people saw. Um, some of them believe that um, everybody is ready, but some of them think that it would be the downfall of civilization, that people would not uh, be able to cope with it, they would lose their faith in anything, in the economy, in the government, in their faith in general. Um, so there's all these like deeper questions, which uh, I wasn't expecting, of course, but got. Uh, and I should know better by now. Um, just because it's a sort of thriller slash horror novel doesn't mean that there aren't going to be deeper questions. And, you know, reading Stephen King, I know that there are always deeper questions. Um, and I love this book. I thought it was really, really good. I can't give it five stars um, because it didn't, like, totally bodily affect me, although the tension and build-up in the story is really, really good. And I do love when a story has numerous characters who don't know each other, and then they all have to come together to fight this one thing. Um, Stephen King does that really well, so I was really curious if Dean Koontz would do it really well, and I was 
pleasantly surprised to see that he did it amazingly. Um, I thought all of these characters were really unique and interesting. I could tell them all apart. They all had their own sort of quirks, and when they were on the page, I knew who they were. Um, I wasn't confused or lost. And like I said, the, the, it's a long buildup to get to where things start to actually happen. But through the first part of the book, we're learning about the characters. We're learning about what they're afraid of, what their motivations are, who they are, what sort of what their backstories are, um, really getting to know them so that once they come together, we can really care about them going through with what they're going to try to do. Um, and then Dean Koontz uh, really ramps up the suspense and the tension and the action and the adventure of the story. For me, I thought it was really, really excellent. I can't speak for anybody else. Um, as I'm filming this, a lot of people who are reading it haven't finished it yet, so I don't know how they feel about it, but I really, really liked it. Um, once part two started, uh, I, I was all in. I was like, sort of through part one, I was like, okay, when is something actually going to happen? Even though I was really enjoying getting to know the characters, it felt like really, it felt really sort of long <laughs> to get there. But then once I got there, I was like, um, okay, now now I sort of know why he did all this, because I need all of this info from these characters in order to care about them as they move forward, as they work together, as they discover things. Um, and then the, the sort of bad influence in the story um, was also really interesting. Those characters were really interesting as well. Um, I was really invested in the story and in the plot and finding out what exactly it was that they saw and how it affects them the way that it does, because a couple of the people who are affected by what what was seen have these sort of like superhuman powers. And that's another question that comes into the book is like, if you are in an event like they were, and you come away with these sort of supernatural powers of some sort, are you still human? And if not, is are you dangerous or are you not? Or like, what can you possibly do to everybody else. Um, it's kind of scary. It's sort of a little bit scary to think about. And so the outside bad forces, I guess you could call them, um, sort of grapple with that idea of, you know, what makes you human and what suddenly makes you not human. And when you aren't human, are you a threat or are you not? Um, so that was really interesting. Um, yeah, I really loved it. I thought it was great. Highly recommend it if you are interested in thrillers. I've only read Odd Thomas by D Dean Koontz before this, and I really liked Odd Thomas. That had a lot of humor in it as well. Um, this one was not as humorous as that, but I really liked the characters, and I really liked the story, and had really good tension and suspense. So, uh, really good thriller for August. And so next month, what we're going to be reading is um, Otessa Moshveg's Eileen, which won the Penn Hemingway Prize. I don't know, it doesn't have a year on here, and I didn't look it up, but it has won the Penn Hemingway Prize. This book was published in 2015, so it won it after that, I'm assuming. Um, so I'm going to read the back of the book. So if you are interested in joining along, like I said, join. Uh, you click the Discord link in the description box and come on over and set yourself up. You can find, join for this read or any upcoming read if you want to. You don't have to join in in, any, in every read. Um, it's very laid back. You read at your own pace throughout the month and contribute to conversations whenever you feel like it. So I'm going to read the back so that we know what it's about for September. All right. The Christmas season offers little cheer for Eileen Dunlop, a young woman trapped between her role as her alcoholic father's caretaker in a home whose squalor is the talk of the neighborhood and her day job as a secretary at the boys' prison, filled with its own quotidian horrors. Consumed by resentment and self-loathing, Eileen dreams of escaping to the big city. In the meantime, she fills her nights and weekends with shoplifting, stalking a buff prison guard named Randy, and cleaning up her increasingly deranged father's messes. When the bright, beautiful, and cheery Rebecca St. John arrives on the scene as the prison's new counselor, Eileen is enchanted and proves unable to resist what appears at first to be a miraculously budding friendship. In a Hitchcockian twist, her affection for Rebecca ultimately pulls her into complicity in a crime that surpasses her wildest imaginings. Played out against the snowy landscape of coastal New England, young Eileen's story is told from the gimlet-eyed perspective of the now much older narrator. Creepy, mesmerizing, and sublimely funny, in the tra tradition of Shirley Jackson and early Vladimir Nabokov, this powerful, no powerful debut novel introduces one of the most original new voices in contemporary literature.
there we go. I've heard really excellent things about this book and I'm excited to read it. So I hope you will join me as well if you are interested. So that was my review for Strangers by Dean Kuntz. Uh, really loved it. If you're interested, let me know in the comment section down below if you've read it, or if you're interested in reading it, or you know any thoughts you have on that. Also, let me know if you've read Eileen or if you're interested in reading that as well. And that's my video for today. I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe to my channel if you would. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you on my next video. Hopefully, it's going to be my Stephen King Project review video. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.